We are in an epidemic, drugs on every corner, every family influenced by some form of a chemical. You wonder what is the answer? What will we do? What is society going to do and what will you do? Join with me as we present the Word of God and solutions to addiction, chemicals, drugs, alcohol, sweets. What is the answer? The answer is found in Jesus Christ. Welcome to Answer to Addiction, Jesus Christ Way. Hi, I'm Ray Gruner. Well, it's been another day in the life of essence on planet Earth. We've dealt with some interesting things in society. The Middle East is in an uproar, and we didn't go off the cliff, and uh, our budgets are a little wry. But the reality is, is that we as Christians can look forward to a better time. Some of us are having hard times, and some of us are not so good. But the reality is, in Christ we can walk in peace. Today I want to talk about something that's really dear to my heart, which is prayer and praise and practical Christianity. I want to say it again. Prayer and praise and practical Christianity. So often, we as individuals, we, we seem to compartmentalize Christianity. Let me explain. We, we, we seem to, to want to say, well, let's see, I go to church on Sunday or Saturday, and, and I go to church on maybe Tuesday night, um, and, and um, that's, my, that's my Christianity. And, and there isn't anybody that intends it to be that way. I want to make that clear. I'm not saying that. I don't think there's ever an intent for it to be that way. For, for God intended it that it would be a lifestyle of a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. However, it happens. And the, see, the Word of God is, is really clear. The thief, Satan, comes to rob, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. And so it's important to understand clearly that there's a thing called practical Christianity, a way of life in which we can live in constant communication with God and at the same time living in a, a life of praise, um, thanking him for who he is. You know, it's, it's important to understand that we are either the influencer or we are the influenced. And it's important to understand that he gives us the strength, the insight, the wisdom to be able to live that life. It, it isn't always easy, practical Christianity. It isn't always, um, we, we only see maybe 200 feet out, um, but that's faith. What is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, so it's, it's, it's about, yeah, I want to live that, but, but oh, boy, boy, that's a, that, that's a struggle, practical Christianity. He gives us the strength, the power to walk it out. You say, well, you know, sometimes I react rather than responding with my spouse or my, 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 my friend or whoever it is, and, 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 and he says he'll give us the desire of our heart, remember? So, so it, it's about us saying, God, help me to respectfully somehow to respond differently, not react in this particular situation, whatever it might be. And, and as we thank him, then we say, God, I praise you that you're going to help me to do that so that I'll be a better friend or a better husband or wife or father and mother and community. And so we've combined prayer, we've combined praise in, into our minute by minute life. Um, sometimes I think that, that we make this journey so complex and it's really all about one word, relationship. It's about relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about understanding that going to a building, we, we as individuals, we as followers of Christ's teachings, when we go to a building, in, in the Word of God, we're called the church. So, so we go to a building, collectively, we're called 
the church. So we're going to church. So what's happened over time is we've we've we painted a picture for society in which which the building is the church, and that's not the case. That you and I as Christians, if I'm talking to, to you as a Christian, we're we are we are going to the building, so therefore the church is showing up, if you please. So so it doesn't matter whether it's a cathedral or whether it's a uh, you know, block building on the corner or, or the church gets together in the field over here. Where two agree, and here's the thing, where two gather together, Jesus says, there I'll be. So, so it's to understand that two of us get together, you know, we're, we're having church. Okay, so practical Christianity again. So how do I as a person in community begin to internalize in my life Practical Christianity, prayer, praise, study the Word of God, prayer, praise, study the Word of God, prayer, praise, study the Word of God. It's a disciplined effort on my part, on your part, to want to have a closer relationship with God. You say, well, Ray, you don't understand where I've been and what I've done. I've said it a thousand times if I've said it once. No, I don't, but I know this. They that call on the name of the Lord, they that call, they that call. Practical Christianity 101, they that call. So you've got to call. You've got to say, God, I need your help. God, I want to make change. God, I don't want to be the man or the woman, the, the kiddo that, that I am. I want to make the change. And he, see, he knows the intent of the heart. And he knows, he knows, he knows. You say, well, Ray, you know, you don't know. I've, yeah, I've had a heart attack, or I've had a stroke, or, or, or I broke my leg, or, or you know, I, I did an act of violence, and I've been in the penitentiary, or, 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 you, you know, you, you don't know. No, here again, I don't know, but he does. They that call, they that call, and so when I call out, I say, God, on behalf of Bill, whoever, God, I, I don't really, I don't know how to talk to Bill. I, I really don't. I, I, I try to, but, he, but he's rude. He snaps and so on and so forth. But God, how, how, do I, how do I do that? What do I do? And what happens is, is that God begins to show you, whether it be through his word or just something within us. Uh, some, some people call it a gut feeling, but whatever. Something happens. And you begin to say, well, maybe he really didn't mean it that way or he's having a bad day or, or whatever. And so we begin to reevaluate how to respond to Bill. Then we begin to pray, pray for Bill. Bill, and we say, God, you know, Bill, Bill's having some tough times or something. I, I don't really know, but God, would you help him? Now you're loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, now your friend, your spouse, you're, you're, and you're, you're thinking, okay, Somehow, some way, this is going to work out. Some way, somehow, we're going to be able to, as we pray for them, we're going to be able to, to help them some way because I'm loving my neighborism itself. I'm mandated. The Word of God mandates every person that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're mandated to love their neighbor as themselves. They're mandated. You say, well, Ray, nobody ever told me that. <laughs> That's what it says in the Word. Matthew 24 again says it. You say, well, I don't know how to love. Well, I'm glad you ask. It's found in 1 Corinthians 13. It, it describes love. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is understanding, et cetera, et cetera. Love no, keeps no record of wrong. You say, well, Ray, huh, I don't understand that. You say, well, uh, I, guess, I guess you're going to have to explain that a little further. Well, when we get we take a break, we're going to be back in just a minute. We'll be back and we'll explain that a little further on the answer to addiction, Jesus Christ. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice, or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. 
Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Returning to Answer to Addiction, Jesus Christ Way. We're chatting for a few minutes here about, about um, I don't know how to love, I don't know what it looks like, and, and I don't know how to integrate it in my life, and so on and so forth. First of all, it's, it's about talking to God on behalf of the situation. It's about realizing he says he'll give us the desire of our heart. And that we were talking about 1 Corinthians 13 and the importance of the attributes of love and how that's very, very God. And, and how that when we, 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 we keep a record of wrong as an example, um, we have to be able to let it go and say, God, and you say, Ray, I can't. But then that, that, that will control you. That will definitely control you. And that will, be, that will be something that will be a block as we pray. It'll be a block. So you ask God, God, what can I do? God, help me to be able to forgive. And as we petition or chat with him or ask him or earnestly plead with him to help you, he will do that. And, it, and, and sometimes it happens instantly. But folks, sometimes... It takes a long time. And it's important to totally understand that. You know, the, the, the cameraman was just chatting with me about the importance of cues and, and not to allow cues to cause me to end uh, a segment I'm in abruptly, as an example. Well, that's the way it is in life. We sometimes, these cues we have in life, they, they, they cause us these bumps in the road cause us to miss the step, cause us to go awry, cause us to head off to the right or to the left. And we've got to look at those cues and say they're just, they're just guiding us down the road. They're not putting a bump in the road. They're just guiding us. And so we, when we come against unfamiliar cue in life, don't allow, it, don't allow it to go this way or this way, but just to look straight ahead and keep on and have a smooth transition in life. And, and that's what he does with... with with uh, scripture via the Holy Spirit. He, as we study the Word of God, as we study the Word of God, as we study the Word of God, see, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Another scripture says, without faith, it's impossible to please God, for he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so when you're seeking him, and you're, you're saying, boy, some way, somehow, I want to learn about just, just constantly you know, talking to God on behalf of my family, constantly talking to God about the situation I'm in, constantly making the change I need to make. As we practice, practice, we practice his presence. As we practice his presence, it becomes a practical a life, a lifestyle of Christianity. And, and that's what's so, so important, is recognizing the very God is, is here with us, praising him in all things, thanking him in all things, worshiping him. And here again, we talked about posture of prayer, posture of worship. The important thing is the intent of our heart. What's the intent of your heart? Do you want to be in a tight relationship with him? Do you want to make the changes necessary? As a, a good example, if you're sitting at home and you can't get out, maybe maybe you're sick, maybe... Uh, you, you've got something wrong with, uh, uh, you, you know, something's happened and you can't get out. Maybe you're in a prison cell today. Uh, whatever it might be, remember this, that you can pray. You can talk to God. You can ask God what you might do today. Maybe what you do today is you sit and you pray for the state. You you pray for every city in the state, every little bump in the road, every little burg in the state. Maybe you pray for all the leadership today. Maybe you spend the time, spend the time talking to God on behalf of the state of Oregon. And here's what happens. As you, as you invest your time, as you spend your time, remember time when it's spent is spent, okay? But God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So as you seek to talk to him, maybe you say, well, okay. So, okay, Ray, you want me to pray on behalf of the state as an, as a, as an illustration? And I say, yeah. 
God, God, God would be pleased if you talk to him about he, he he requests that we do this. He requests that we pray. You say, Ray, I don't understand why the very creator. I don't either. That's the way he set it up. He set it up. that You and I would talk on behalf of to him on behalf of people. Situations. To his glory, to his honor, to his praise. So as. As you, maybe you're in a prison cell today and you say, Ray, I can't fix what I did. You know, I, I really want to, and I really want to make change, but I don't know how to do it. The Bible says first, confess, accept him as Savior. Secondly, begin a process of studying the word of God. Third, you praise him. You say, Ray, I don't feel like praising, praising him. I don't, you know, no way. Do it. Just do it. You say, boy, that just do it. Just say, God, I, I can't. Uh, but just, just, just begin that process. As you begin that process, it will become easier to do that, and that process will soften your heart. You see, you see, we're, we're very self-centered people. We, when we're especially in addiction, we have a tendency to all about I. It's never about anybody else, but it's about the chemical. When we understand, when we understand that as we begin to focus on other people, a healing process happens within us. And we're not focusing now about self, but we're focusing on other people. Remember that. So, so whether it's in a prison cell, whether it's sitting home because you can't go do anything, or, or whether maybe a period of time you just have to do certain things, you, you can sit and you can pray. You can talk to God. On behalf of this great state you can talk to God on behalf of your circle of influence you can talk to God on behalf of leadership within our schools as an example and literally you and I both know that in our schools we need help I mean it's been violence upon violence upon violence uh, we had a very close violent thing happen a number of years ago within my family, within the schools. And I'm very, 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 very sensitive to the importance that we take care of our schools and that we pray on behalf of all folks within our schools, our circles, beginning, of course, with our kids and, and, and with leadership and so on and so forth. There's a lot of godly men and women within our schools. Um, and, and it's important that we focus on on helping them and providing them with the tools necessary begins by praying for them. It begins by praying for them. It begins by, by, by praising God that he's answering our prayers. That's a beginning of maturity. That's a beginning of change um, as we take our eyes off of self and onto community. One of the things that, that what then happen in our lives is we begin to do that. We begin to see people differently. We begin to see, oh, Bill really wasn't that kind of a guy. He, he oh, maybe it was my attitude. And so as we begin to think on other people, change begins to happen in our own lives. We begin to realize, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And and we begin to realize that, oh, we're not as quick to be agitated. We're not as quick to react to situations. Well, we're going to take another break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with the answer to addiction, Jesus Christ's way. Now, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. All right. I know. Two seconds. Hang on. Just stand still. Stand still. Love. This is One second. I know. No. Boys, hang on, boys. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. The tragedy of September 11th united our country. This year, as we open the 9-11 Memorial in New York City, we ask that you join us to honor, remember, and reunite. To learn more or to reserve your visit, go to 911memorial.org.
returning to answer to addiction, Jesus Christ's way. One of the things that happens is as we're, we're, we're on our journey is there's always things that come up that we wonder where in the world did it come from. We wonder what in the world I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, boy, things are going great. And bam, something happens. And, and you say, well, you know, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. You're on the track. You're doing well. You see, God says to you this day, and here's what he wants you to hear. You have value. You're important. It doesn't matter what somebody has said to you. It doesn't matter what uh, somebody has implied. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you today. You have value. You're important. You're loved by very God. It doesn't matter if, um, if uh, society has said you're worthless. It doesn't matter if a parent has said it. It doesn't matter if a kid has said it to you, parent. God loves you. It doesn't matter. What matters is he loves you. And you've got to realize that sometimes people do say things that, that are harmful, that hurt. But don't lose sight of the fact that God loves you. You say, you don't know what's happened to me, Ray. You don't know where I've been how the harm, the things that have been done. No, I, and I say it time and time again, no, I don't. But he does, and he loves you, and he just wants to be in relationship with you. He wants, wants you to know, he says, if you confess him as Savior, if you confess, ask him for forgiveness, he'll forgive you, he'll, he'll come into your life and be your Savior. He said so, he promises that. And so, this week, focus on, praise him in all things, thank him in all things, continue to pray, continue to ponder, continue to meditate on the word, and he will bring it alive within your life. One of the things, uh, switching gears here a little bit, but one of the things that uh, uh, is awkward for me to talk about, but is important for me to talk about, and that's the funding of this program. It's, it's difficult it's very difficult to think about money as an example and what it, what it means. But without money, it's just difficult to, to fund programs like this. It requires money, money and more money. But the gospel is worth it. Maybe it's your son or daughter, or maybe it's you. But somebody needs to hear this program without the state, through the, through the state. Somebody needs to hear and God has impressed upon me that we need to cover the state we have begun that process we've begun the process of, of moving throughout the state and and uh, we want you to know that we need your help we want you to know that if this programming has been a benefit to you that that it, we would really appreciate it if uh, some town if you have the wherewithal to do it if 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 you're in a position if you would if you would uh, if you would help, we'd really appreciate it. It's Ray Gruner, and that's G-R-U-E-N-E-R, Ray Gruner, at Post Office Box 264, Springfield, Oregon, 97477. That's Ray Gruner, G-R-U-E-N-E-R, Post Office Box 264, Springfield, Oregon, 97477. And if you could send, you know, whatever, large or small, we'd really appreciate it to be able to fund the time and, 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 and all of the, the stuff that goes with it to be able to uh, uh, move this uh, programming across the state. I do know that uh, um, it's vital uh, in the days when we're facing, you say, well, Ray, you don't know the, the situations I'm in. I don't, but God does, and God knows what you can or can't do, and, and, and we, you know, God appreciates it. We appreciate it to be able to move forward to do this, this programming now. And we know this, that, um, that God rewards those who, who do that. God honors those who are willing to help. And one of the things, another thing that's so vital is to pray for us as we do this because it's difficult at times to move forward with it. There's such a, 
a heavy do war warfare that goes on, different things that transpires that we've been speaking to earlier. That that it it's we we need all the prayer, and and we would ask you to to have folks within your circle of influence, if you're a believer, that would pray that would pray for this uh, this out this outreach, and for folks in your circle of influence that might help in other ways. We we, we would really really appreciate it. And uh, one of the things that happens is 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 we move forward and then we get hit with something else and we move forward and we get hit with something else. It just happens that way. But we're, we are going forward. We are going to uh, cover the state because we feel like that's a mandate uh, that we uh, reach the folks that um, uh, possibly won't enter um, buildings or won't listen any other way. Maybe by chance in their home, in the comfort of their, their, their home, they'll listen to this programming a little bit. And uh, so... Uh, we, we, we do need your help. Um, it's, um, it's a blessing to be able to serve. It's a blessing to be able to, to um, present the programming to you. Um, one of the things that uh, we're now in the process of is evaluating the Salem, Oregon area, as an example, and, <coughs> excuse me, and entering the Portland market. Portland market is very expensive, and, uh, uh, and then the other market is up the Columbia Gorge and that end of it. And uh, we, we do know this, that uh, God is able through his people and through people that uh, maybe uh, look and say, this is a good thing. For any time that we can help bring people into um, a, a functional part of society, uh, laying down chemicals and so on and so forth, it's a good thing. And uh, to, to help parents to be clean and sober, it's a good thing. And that's our goal, is to uh, facilitate that through the, this broadcast and to be able to um, present in a, uh, a non-intimidating environment um, uh, the Word of God and uh, the practical aspects of Christianity, uh, a way of life, a journey, the following of Christ's teachings. And so as we move forward into those markets, be praying for us as we move forward. Um, uh, prices are high. But we serve a big God, um, and we need all the uh, the help that we can uh, that we can get to do that. Um, one of the things that uh, is important is is the time frames involved, and in, and in when the airing comes, and uh, the times that are available, and so on and so forth. And so, be praying for us as we examine those times and and how that might happen. Um, remembering the Scripture says, "Give, and it will be given you." Uh, good pressure. Uh, shape, and, shape down, shaken together, shall men give to you. For whatever measure you give, it will be given back to you. And so remember then, it's a process. Remember it's a process. It's, it's a way of life. Um, it's awkward, like I, like I said earlier, for me to even talk about this, but we need to do this. We need to move forward with answer to addiction, Jesus Christ's way. So remember, praise God in all things this week and pray continually.